In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. God's providence of creation. An amazing message of life about human salvation. The origin of the earth and the universe. Dr. Jerrock Lee's lecture on Genesis will address interesting subjects such as the providence of human creation, the great flood of Noah, the pyramid, the black hole, etc. Dear viewers, let us meditate on God's will with today's scripture. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ and Christian and Mamin TV viewers, from today I'm starting the lecture on the book of Genesis. Genesis 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The beginning in this verse refers to the point in time when God began to create the heavens and the earth. However, in order to completely understand the works of God's creation, you should also learn the works prior to this creation. Since some people don't know very much about the spiritual realm, from time to time you will learn things that differ widely from what is commonly accepted information. For example, there is a research that says the Garden of Eden is located somewhere in southwestern Africa. People once said the Garden of Eden was in the Middle East, and now they say it is located in Africa. In addition, there is a wide diversity of opinion over the identity of UFOs that are observed in many parts of the world. Some people believe that aliens from highly advanced planets are piloting the UFOs, and some fear that the aliens may attack human beings. And then it is now strange not to believe the existence of this UFO. Many people believe it. Through the Genesis lecture, the works of the creation even before the beginning will be explained. This Genesis lecture series will proclaim that God is the only creator and He alone governs the history of mankind. And it will be broadcast worldwide via television and internet and published as books. And thus, it will help many souls believe God the Creator and accept Jesus Christ and reach salvation. This Genesis lecture is also spiritually beneficial to the whole congregation. The first John chapter 2 verse 13 says, I'm writing to you, fathers, because you know him who has been from the beginning. Once you come to know God who has existed even before eternity, through this Genesis lecture, your faith will even grow more quickly. And your faith can reach the mature measure of stature, which is the faith of a father. I give thanks to God the Father who explains such deep meanings, and I hope that you will listen to the word with a longing heart. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that as you know more about God, you may accomplish a sincere heart and full assurance of faith to have even more intimate fellowship with God. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let's take a brief look at Genesis. Who do you think the author of Genesis is? Just as 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 says, all scripture is inspired by God. The author of Genesis is God. And it was Moses who recorded what God said. Of course, Genesis doesn't specifically say Moses recorded Genesis. 
Generally speaking, however, it is believed that it was Moses that recorded Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, and Numbers, which are called the five books of Moses, known as in the Pentateuch. From the moment of the Exodus from Egypt till he led the Israelites to the land of Canaan, through 40 days of fasting on Mount Sinai, Moses maintained deep communication with God. During this period of time, Moses received all the law, including the Ten Commandments and the plan of the tabernacle from God. It is generally accepted that the Israelites' life in the wilderness during the Exodus took place roughly from 1450 till 1410 BC. It is also said Genesis was all recorded in that period of time, which was about 3,400 years ago. Genesis can be divided into two major sections. The first half is from chapter 1 to 11. This part includes the work of the creation, the fall of man, the great flood of Noah, and the account of the Tower of Babel. The second half is from chapter 12 to 50, which introduces the chronicles of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. Now, what is the message that God desires to proclaim to you through Genesis? It is that God is the Creator, the Lord of all, and the Governor of the history of mankind. Psalm 96 verse 10 says, Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Indeed, the world is firmly established. It will not be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. There are many people who neither fear God nor even admit there is a God, despite the fact that they are mere creatures. Romans chapter 1 verse 21 to 23 says, For even though they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible men and of birds and four-footed animals and crawling creatures. Also, Romans 1 verse 25 says, For they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. The duty of man is to stand in awe and reverent respect for God the Creator and to live by the will of God. Men are happiest when they live like that and they can actually acquire eternal life. However, as the end time draws nearer and nearer, you can see men's ideas and theories are raised to stand in opposition to God. God is the only Creator. And He lives and works the same yesterday and today and forever. There are many evidences that can prove God is the Creator. Romans chapter 1 verse 20 says, For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made, so that they are without excuse. As you may understand and know, while listening to this Genesis lecture, God's eternal power and divine nature are clearly seen through what He made. And thus, and the people cannot make an excuse on the Judgment Day. They cannot make an excuse. Those who are of goodness in heart can acknowledge the existence of God just by looking at the things in nature. And in doing so, they live their lives in the reverent fear of God. However, God doesn't forsake even those who have no goodness in their hearts and who deny God by you know, in enveloping themselves in worldly knowledge and theory. Before their eyes, God presents the countless things that can never be accomplished by man, but are only possible by the power of God. God causes them to believe God the Creator just by witnessing such works. God is working without taking rest, even today, in order to lead as many souls as He can to believe 
and to reach salvation. Therefore, we should fervently show and spread the evidences of the living God, the Creator, to the many souls of the whole world. We should allow more of them to know God, the Creator, and fear God. I hope that you too will be able to gain stronger faith, fear God from the depths of your heart, and love God evermore greatly through this Genesis lecture series. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you may become proper according to the purpose of God's creation of mankind. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in order to completely understand the works of the creation, you should learn the things that took place even before the beginning. Therefore, for a number of lectures, I'm going to explain these works that took place prior to the creation, the beginning in other words. The Bible doesn't record in detail the things prior to the creation, but that does not mean there were none. It is just that Though they read, people don't understand. To know God who had existed even before the beginning, I offered many fastings and prayers to God. And then God began to explain Genesis to me in the 1980s. But I didn't deliver it because it was too deep and too difficult to understand. And by that time, in addition, you know, I didn't have proper recording system to make a record of the Word of God. And the one recorder that I had lasted only for 15 minutes. And since it was difficult to make a record of the Word of God, you know, it was also difficult to remember what God said. Then later, you know, I had to hang on to God to give me the Word again and again. So the situation was like that. You know, when I couldn't remember the Word of God, I had to ask God, you know, clinging and hanging. The reason I could deliver it was that God began to explosively show the power of creation that was more than enough to show evidence that verifies the word. God has spoken and I delivered the word. But if my main members don't understand it, who can understand it? God the Father has shown explosive works of God's power and signs and wonders. And so you have seen them and experienced them. Then, as you listen to the Word of God, you can say Amen to it and believe whatever you listen. Moreover, it is now even easier to explain the spiritual realm since you have experienced and understood the spiritual space. However, this may be difficult to believe for those who have weak faith. Therefore, please be careful when you convey the deep spiritual word that you hear through this lecture. It is similar to giving children food that is easy to digest. Otherwise, they may not be able to digest the food. It is the same with spiritual realm. The first Corinthians 3 verse 1 and 2 says, And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual men, but as to men of flesh, as to infants in Christ. I gave you milk to drink, not solid food, for you are not yet able to receive it. Indeed, even now you are not yet able. It is better to plan the word, such as the message of the cross and the measure of faith into the heart of those who have the faith of children. And you should also help them grow their faith first through the evidences of the living God. If you feed them with the deep spiritual word that is difficult for them to deal with, it may, in fact, cause harm to them. Dear brothers and sisters, the beginning mentioned in Genesis 1 verse 1 is the time point when God began the creation. However, John chapter 1 verse 1 also mentions the beginning. It reads, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The 66 books of the Bible is the same. Okay, the 66 books of the Bible are the same. They are all Word of God. The beginning of John verse 1 is significantly prior to the beginning of Genesis 1 verse 1. It is a point in time even much, much before the creation. 
It indicates a time that human beings cannot comprehend. Well, from before eternity till after eternity. Well, you may understand this concept only after you go to the heavenly kingdom. Uh, you may not be able to understand it now. Even if I explain it to you, you may not understand it. God has existed alone from the time of the beginning, even before the time of the creation. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 14, God introduces himself to Moses by saying, I am who I am. God himself is perfect and complete. No one gave birth to God, but he has existed all by himself. Then, what did the God, I mean, who has existed even before the eternity, look like? What did the God look like? Genesis 1 verse 27 says, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. It says, God created the first man in the image of God himself. Therefore, we can see that God had the appearance of a man when he created man. Then, did he exist with the look of a man from the beginning? Did he exist with the look of a man from the beginning, really? No. As I may explain in greater detail later, God didn't originally have the appearance of a man. But at a certain point in time, God took on the appearance and the form of a man. Before he was an image of a man then, what did God the origin look like? Try to imagine the light of rippling stars which are filling the whole limitless vast universe. You know, the vast universe refers to all the universes, including the first heaven that you see with your eyes, you know, which has countless stars, and the second heaven, third heaven, and the fourth heaven. Well, I'm talking about the time even before the first heaven was created, though. Inside the waves of the light comes a mighty, yet clean and elegant sound. This is the look of God, the origin. Let me explain it again. God, the origin, was filling up the whole original universe in the form of light that contained the sound. You have seen many things and you have known many things. When I pray from this altar, the prayer instantly goes out to the world. Those with spiritual eyes can see the prayer becomes a series of a light of rainbow colors, and it goes out to the world. And those who receive this prayer experience the healing works at the same time. How can a man imagine such almighty power of God? But you have seen it and experienced it, haven't you? The original universe that I just mentioned is different from the universe that you see with your eyes now. The universe you see now is the physical universe of the flesh. However, the original universe is not physical and fleshly, but spiritual. When God the origin existed alone, there was only a spiritual realm. There was no need for a fleshly world. I will attempt to now explain when the physical universe that we see now came to exist. Dear brothers and sisters, I told you that God the origin consists of mainly the light and the sound. Let's take a look at the original light. The original light doesn't have form or structure. It is rather like a flowing and rolling swell manifested like a rippling wave as it moves. The rippling wave of light flows through the entire universe. The original light is brilliant white, containing all the colors of the rainbow with indescribable brilliance, beauty, and radiance. Say, you put all kinds of different jewels in one place and shine a strong light at them. Then, various colors of lights will be reflected from the jewels. 
Such lights don't have a certain form, but it appears that the light will ripple like a moving wave. Among the things that exist on this earth, the most similar to the original light is the aurora. The aurora, sometimes called the northern and southern polar lights, are natural light phenomena usually observed in the sky of the polar regions. Now you can see on the screen. Auroras are produced by the collision of charged particles from Earth's magnetosphere. Their color varies in shades of red, blue, yellow, green, pink, and violet. It is similar to unveiling a curtain of light color on the sky. It appears that lights flow like a rippling wave in the sky. It is said that those who have ever seen an aurora can never forget it because the phenomenon is so beautiful. The original light of God is by far much more beautiful and it presents much more brilliant light than this aurora. Countless numbers of lights are coming out at the same time, but they all softly, softly flow as one throughout the whole universe. And thus, the first John chapter 1 verse 5 says, God is the light, and in Him there is no darkness at all. Of course, when it says God is light, this light is also spiritual light. It is opposite to the darkness, which is untruth. The truth, goodness, and love correspond to this spiritual light. God Himself is this spiritual light, and at the same time, His original appearance itself was the light. And God the origin kept the sound in that light. How can the sound be kept in the light? Have you ever heard a sound that travels together with the wind? The wind from the sea conveys the sound of the waves afar. The wind from a forest sometimes contains the sound of rustling leaves or trees swinging and bumping into each other. Well, imagine yourself in the winter field, snowy blizzard blowing against you. What would you hear? What would you hear? Just as the sound is conveyed in the wind, God the origin kept the sound in the light. This original sound was not delivered from some other place. It resounded from the original light itself. Just as the sound is heard where the wind blows, the original sound, together with the original light, also embraced the entire universe as it spread. Those who have ever heard the voice of God will never for ever forget the voice. Will never ever forget the sound, forget the voice. No matter how poor your memory power is, once you hear the voice of God, you can never forget His voice. I myself have heard his voice a couple of times. It is resounding, yet remarkably clear, crisp, and clean. Revelation verse 1 verse 15 said, The voice of the Lord was like the sound of many waters. It means the voice of the Lord is so pure and clean. Likewise, the original sound of God is so clean, transparent, sweet, and soft, yet resounding as to echo through the entire universe. However, even if you God sound his voice out, if you don't have spiritual eyes, I mean spiritual ears open, you cannot hear it. Why? If you hear it, some may die. Since the sound is too resounding, people cannot endure it. So Father God reduces the sound, but it is still very clear and crisp. When I prayed with my wife once in my store, when I heard the voice of God, 
My wife felt it. My wife felt that I and the Father God had a conversation, but she couldn't hear it. I myself, I was the only one who could hear it. When the Apostle Paul met the Lord, the same thing happened. Other people couldn't hear the voice of the Lord, but Apostle Paul heard. So, the voice of the Lord, so pure and clean. To make a comparison to a sound of the earth, it is similar to the sound which is generated when high-quality clean and clear crystal is rubbed on the rim or thin and transparent crystal glasses are tapped against each other. Has anyone ever heard the cracking sound of ice of a lake that starts to melt in spring? The sound is resounding, yet pure and clean. Have you ever heard that story? I mean, the sound, you know, cracking sound? In polar regions, the ice that has been frozen over long years sometimes melts and cracks. The sound of it is so big and clean and clear that it travels very far. Such cracking sound of glaciers can travel so far away. It may travel in you know, 50 kilometers away. It is such a clean and big sound. Of course, the sound that got the origin kept in the light cannot be compared with anything of this earth. I just compared it to the sound of the earth to help you understand better. Now, this sound is the word as mentioned in John 1 verse 1. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word in the beginning is actually referring to the original sound that sounds in the original light. The Bible describes God as the Word rather than the sound, since the essence of the sound is the Word. If the Word is the contents, God is the name of it. Now, which one is the core? The name God or the Word? What? That's right. It is the Word. So, the Word is God. Well, Pastor Sujin Lee is there. The name Sujin Lee and her spirit, soul, and body. Which one is the core? Yes, that's right. It is her spirit, soul, and body. Sujin Lee is just the name to distinguish her from others. There might be hundreds of Sujin Lee. You know, just how many people are in this church, you know, who have the same name, Sujin Lee. The name is what is used to distinguish someone from others. And the core, is that man's spirit, soul, and body. Likewise, the Word is the true core, and the term God is just the name for God the Father. If the Word is contents, God is the name of it. For example, every man has a name, but this name is a mere an you know, appellation that is assigned to each person. The name itself is not the actual being. Some may say, you know, even if people die, they leave their names to the, you know, the next generation. But the problem is that there are, there might be same names, maybe hundreds of them. In this church alone, there are names. I mean, there are people who share the same name, about like hundreds of them. There are many in such names. So what I'm saying is, the name itself is not the actual being. There are many who share the same name, but they are not the same only because their name is the identical. Therefore, more important than each one's name is the essence or the substance of the man. The essence of God is the Word, and this Word filled the entire universe as in the form of the light and the sound. By the way, I explained the spiritual light earlier. 
if untruth, evil, and sin are spiritual darkness, truth, goodness, and love correspond to the spiritual light. And I told you that the sound that got the origin kept in the light was the word. Therefore, this word itself is the truth, goodness, and love. It shares the same attributes with the spiritual light. The attribute of God who himself is the truth, goodness, and love is called spirit. God's image is also spirit because God is the attribute of spirit itself. In other words, God has the image of spirit, not the visible image of flesh. That's why John chapter 4 verse 24 says, God is spirit. God the origin is spirit, and He spread through the entire universe as in the image of light that contained the sound. The period of time is the time of eternity that cannot be understood in the perspective of fleshly time. God who existed alone for an eternity of years once came to have a thought. How happy and touching it would be if someone could understand this vast and huge universe and my heart. How happy and touching to be able to share love with me. And if he were willing to respond to the emotion of my heart and convey his heart back to me when I convey mine to him. God wanted to have another being who could feel the fullness of the things of the universe and who could share love together with Him. From the beginning, God had the characters of God and of a man. But than enjoying all the things that belong to God by Himself alone, God wanted to share them with someone else. Then, a new work was planned in His heart. The new work was the work of human cultivation to get true children. And it was also the creation of the heavens and the earth that would become the grounds for human cultivation. Then what was the first work that God did? Let me conclude this message, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Tonight, I explain the original appearance of God. I explain that God was filling the whole universe in the beautiful light of rainbow colors and in the form of the sound that contains the word. What did I tell you was the reason why God, who existed alone like this, planned for the creation? I said, it is to gain a being with which he could share his love. God began the history of human cultivation in order to get love and to give love. However, before he ever received love, he first gave limitless love. All the works of the creation were achieved one by one in His love. A mother who is pregnant with her child tries to prepare the best for her baby. Before the baby is born, she prepares many things for the baby such as toys, cradles, diapers, and something like that. Everything. She tries to prepare everything for her baby. In the same way, in order to get true children that he can share his love with, God accomplished the works of the creation with his amazing wisdom and power. I hope that you will remember this heart of God. May you love God all the more from the innermost heart and present such emotion and happiness before God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray.
dear brothers and sisters, what was the very first thing that God the origin did for the human cultivation? He formed the sound containing light that spread throughout the whole uni original universe to cohere and came to have a certain form as light. To cohere means to gather together to form a united whole. Let me repeat it. To cohere is to gather together to form a united whole. To, I mean, the place where the original light that contained the original sound cohered is the vertex of the spiritual realm. By the way, the original sound initially sounded at this vertex of the spiritual realm, and this sound spread out. The original sound that sounded from the vertex of the spiritual realm permeated the original light and then spread to the whole original universe. But now, God made it cohere at the vertex of the spiritual realm and it became a certain form of light. Of course, in this cohering light was the Word, the essence of God, which is the sound. Once God, the origin, cohered into light, He divided Himself into three different lights. They were God the Holy Father, God the Holy Son, and God the Holy Spirit, which is God the Trinity. Well, I will come back to this in the next lecture. At the same time when God the origin cohered into a light, heavens of different dimensions were made. Here, heaven has the same concept of the space of the universe. There was initially only one original universe, but now different universes were made. So it was originally one universe, but it is divided into a number of different universes. How could the single one and only original universe become a number of different universes? As the original light that spread, the, spread throughout the original universe cohered at the vertex of the spiritual realm, the intensity of the light varied and it caused a number of different universes to come to exist. Is it difficult? I mean, are you with me? Well, understanding is not enough. You should have make bread out of it then it will be easy for you to understand this Genesis lecture, all right? The intensity of the light used to be always the same anywhere in the original universe. But now, the intensity was the strongest at the vertex of the spiritual realm, and there were other places which had weaker intensity. For example, if you install 10,000 light bulbs of the same brightness in a temple, it will be bright the same intensity everywhere in the temple. Now, if you turn on only one light bulb in the center, which is as bright as all the 10,000 light bulbs, what will happen? Now, I mean, are you with me? Can you imagine it now? Are you? I mean, can you? The closer to the bulb, the brighter it will be, but the farther, the dimmer. Can you get it? With 10,000 light bulbs evenly installed in the temple, the brightness is the same any place in the temple. But if you put only one light bulb, which is as bright as 10,000 light bulbs, in the center of the temple only, it will be bright in the center, but it is not so in the corner. Likewise, when the original light cohered as one, different spaces were formed according to the brightness of the light. By the way, this original light is spiritual light. Therefore, as the intensity of the brightness of the light changes, 
the, in, the density of the attributes of the Spirit also changes. What is the attribute of the Spirit? Well, it is getting more and more difficult, right? It refers to the imperishable and unchanging characteristics. So it refers to the imperishable and unchanging characteristics, all right? The attribute of the flesh that is in opposite to the spirit is perishable and changeable characteristics. So, to the extent you come into spirit, you do not change. Since you do not change once you come into spirit, you are called the spirit. So you will have no cunning heart. You will not change your heart. Once you know it is the will of God, then you will follow the will. You will not change your heart for your flesh. This is the truth. If you think it is the will of God, then you will just follow it. The faith is the same. If you have the faith of spirit, your faith never changes. You just go on. You just keep on going by faith. And you will see the miracles of God when you show your faith. But the man of flesh will think, what if it goes wrong? But the man of spirit doesn't think about it. So the attribute of the flesh is perishable and changeable. As the original light cohered as one, the relation of the brightness of the light and the density of the spirit became different with distance from the vertex. Then, the original universe, which had been as one, became a total of four universes. And God called each of the universes the first heaven, the second heaven, the third heaven, and the fourth heaven, respectively. Let's think over the message and pray together. Hallelujah, Father God. Thank you for the grace and love. Please help us make what we heard today become faith and life in us. Father, the message is surely hard and difficult to understand. So please help us understand it well by faith and help us make bread out of it. Father, help us hear it again and again to completely understand every word so that the next message won't be difficult at all. Father God, who else can understand such deep spiritual realm and heavens written in the Bible? Since you have explained them to us, we can understand them and we can preach them as well. Bless the congregation and those who listen to this lecture through the internet, through GCN and Manmin TV, and bless them to receive great grace and faith and let this message become faith and life in them. Thank you, Father. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah! Almighty Father God of love, please lay your hands on all brothers and sisters receiving this prayer here in attendance. Lay your hands on all the members of the brain churches and local centuries, and all the GCN and Mammin TV viewers, and those who are receiving this prayer via satellites, cables, and the internet all over the world, transcending space and time. Plant faith in their hearts and drive out their negative thoughts and doubts. Let all the trials and afflictions leave them. By the fire of the Holy Spirit, from head to toe, scorch their sick and affected parts, including all cells, tissues and nerves, all internal organs and intestines. Let the light of creation come upon them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs and viruses, and infirmities, go away. Let the light shine on them. Scorch their incurable and long-term diseases by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Burn all kinds of endemic and contagious diseases like malaria. Let all new and unknown diseases, including swine flu, depart from them, be cleansed and made well. All epidemic diseases, such as colds and fever, go away from them. Protect them from any kinds of germs and viruses and bacteria. Heal them of all kinds of cancers, like stomach cancer, lung cancer, liver cancer, breast cancer, womb cancer, intestinal cancer, 
and all other diseases like AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, women's diseases, thyroid diseases, and all inflammations. Let them be made whole from polio, stroke, arthritis, herniated discs, and many others. Let all kinds of pains disappear from them, like back pain, headache, and neuralgia. Set them free from epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and all other mental diseases. Loosen them from all kinds of paralysis and let them get up, walk, and jump. Let them regain good eyesight and restore good hearing. Let the blind open their eyes and the deaf come to hear and mute begin to speak. Heal them of after effects of all kinds of accidents. Restore their ruptured and broken bones. Restore them from burns and let the heat and burning sensation go away from them. Father, let there be no scars left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions and poisoning. Father, regenerate dead nerves, tissues and cells and bring the dead back to life. Father, please bless them to conceive a baby. Bless them to conceive a baby. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the air, the evil forces and their servants, go away from them. Go away, you evil spirits, unclean spirits, deceiving spirits, spirits of falsehood, separating spirits and all forces of darkness. Loosen all bonds of wickedness and darkness and go away from them. Let the light shine on them. Father God, give them strength to cry out in their prayer and empower them with the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. Let them be in good health as their soul becomes prosperous and let their family be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters and bless them to lead a successful and prosperous life in everything. Please protect your children, their home, their business and their work by the fiery hedge of the Holy Spirit with the heavenly host and angels and with your blazing eyes. Give students wisdom and understanding and fill their hearts with more passion and desire for study. Keep their hearts and minds from worldly things and plant into their hearts more fervent love for God. Bless your children and let them give glory to you in everything they do, whether they eat or drink or whatever they do. Let them confess and testify to the living God, I've met God, I've experienced God, and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Let all glory be to you alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. God's providence of creation. An amazing message of life about human salvation. We should fervently spread the evidences of the living God, the Creator. So that many more people can know God, the Creator, and fear Him. Dear viewers, let us meditate on God's will with today's scripture. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, first of all, let me briefly explain about the book of Genesis. Who is the author of the book of Genesis? That is God. Genesis is largely separated into two parts. What is the message that God wants to proclaim through Genesis? It tells us that God is the creator, governor of all things, and the master of the history of mankind. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the beginning in the first verse of Genesis 1 refers to the point where God began creating the heavens and the earth. And we can also find the beginning in the John chapter 1 verse 1. The beginning in John 1 verse 1 is much earlier in time than the beginning in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. 
God existed by himself since before the beginning, before the creation. In what form did the original God exist? The original God existed in the whole original space in the form of the light that contained the sound. Then why did God, who existed alone in the universe, plan to create the heavens and the earth? It is to gain someone whom he could share love with. Always remember this heart of God. And I pray in the name of the Lord that you may love Him even more eagerly from the heart and thereby can be happiness and joy to God.